Now that I know better, I know that I cannot live without these things in Artist Alley. Hi, I'm Macy and I'm the artist and designer behind Moalkena, a small business focused on kawaii merch. I've been a vendor at 23 events so far, with my more well-known shows being Anime Expo, Fanime, and LA Comic Con. It can be overwhelming thinking about what you'll need for your artist alley table. So here are some of the best things that I've purchased that have made my artist alley life a whole lot easier. The first thing that I absolutely love is my telescoping stool. And I remember seeing this on TikTok and thinking, this would be perfect for artist alley. I don't often sit during events, so I use this as a way to stack my products in front of me so they're not on the ground. It's really compact and light, and it even comes with a strap so you can carry it kind of like a bag. And it's also pretty affordable and would be nice to have a few of them just to lift your stuff up from the ground. Outside of cons, I also like to use it for theme parks. I've also used it whenever I line up for voice actors at conventions. Moving on to my next best investment, and it is a Square Reader. Now, there are many types of point of sale systems. However, Square is one of the more common ones. I initially started off with a Square Reader, and I suggest you go this route if you are just starting out. It only costs $50, and it does accept chip and tap, and it also comes with a swipe reader if needed. You can connect it to your phone via Bluetooth and then use the Square app on your phone to make payments. My only con is that customers will have to touch your phone in order to make that payment. So then you'd have to clean your phone after every use. And this reader also doesn't have the swipe feature. You'd have to attach this piece um, just for the rare instances that someone can only swipe their card. And it has only really happened to me maybe four to five times in my 23 events. Note, I will say that you do receive a free swipe reader from Square once you sign up with them. However, I will say that a lot of people do prefer paying with chip while others don't even have their physical wallets on them because they have their cards on Apple Pay or Google Pay and would much prefer to pay with tap. More recently, I've also invested in a Square terminal. And same with the reasons above, I decided to go with this because I wanted a separate station to accept payments rather than just using my phone. I also wanted this so I can have a separate payment for when I have a helper. The terminal would be attached to my phone's hotspot and the reader could be connected to my helper's phone if I do leave the table since I tend to take my phone with me. Now this isn't advisable for beginners because it is expensive. My only con really is that because the Square terminal does require internet connection in order to use it, you will have to use your phone as a hotspot or you can connect it to Wi-Fi if there is Wi-Fi available. However, most conventions do require that you pay for Wi-Fi. Now this is one of my favorite items for my display and it is my Gashapon machine. These are so, so worth the purchase and have paid for themselves many times over. Gashapons are really popular at family-oriented events like 626 because parents just don't want to pay $16 for a pin and kids love playing with it. I only use my Gashapon for B-grade pins and it comes with about four tokens. I kind of work it like Chuck E. Cheese, <laughs> if you remember that. Basically, customers have the option to buy one token for seven and three tokens for 20. There is a likelihood that they'll receive doubles, so I do let them exchange the extra for another turn. And I usually offer it if the pins are going to only one person instead of three friends who have one token each, or if they seem really disappointed in receiving a duplicate, or if they ask like what happens if they get a duplicate. <laughs> However, some people actually do like to receive more than one of the same pin. I think I've had one kid once who pulled like one Zenitsu and then two Rengoku pins and he did not want to trade it in. <laughs> the ball capsules that come with my machine only fit my one and a half pins. So if I have my Demon Slayer pins that are two inches, I laminated an image of my design inside so I know what they pulled and then I'll just give it to them. I also asked for the capsules back so I can reuse them again. Going a little off tangent, I do really appreciate my bike locks. If you didn't know already, as with any retail space, theft is rampant at Artist Alley. I've heard so many horror stories of artists getting their items stolen like right in front of them or even overnight, even though the place is locked. And this is why I invested in bike locks. Although I can never fully stop theft because people are people and they're just gonna steal if they wanna steal. You can at least deter it and make them work for it. At least put in some effort if they're gonna steal from you. I personally like to bike lock my bins to the table so you'd have to pretty much drag everything away, including the table and my display. 
If you don't have a bike lock, you can zip tie your suitcase or storage items to the table as an alternative. Y'all, if you are doing Artist Alley, you need a foldable wagon. A lot of people like to throw around the word need. This is a need. You need something that has wheels, and for me, it's a foldable wagon. I'm telling you, one of the worst experiences I've had in Artist Alley was because I forgot my folded wagon. <laughs> Having this has made my life so much easier. It fits two of my storage bins stacked up on top of each other and a few extra items. I also used it when it was soaking rain outside of Anime Impulse and it held up like a champ. I will note that some convention centers like the LA Convention Center that houses Anime Expo and LA Comic Con supposedly don't allow it due to union rules. So make sure that it isn't quote unquote heavy duty as in the wheels are just really thick. An alternative to this is to use suitcases, which is beneficial if you plan to fly to cons in the future. Ever since I invested in heavy duty storage bins, my life has not been the same. I got mine from Costco and these are pretty popular in the vendor space. As mentioned in my previous point, they stack and lock onto each other perfectly and also withstood the storm that is Anime Impulse. A typical six foot artist alley table fits two of these bins underneath with some space in the center. I also recommend adding stickers to them just so you know which one is yours because as mentioned, nearly everyone has it and someone can just switch it around and now you, you lost your inventory. Moving on to branding, I really love my acrylic badges that have my logo on it. As someone who went to college for marketing and business, I wholeheartedly believe in branding, which is why I have these logo badges. I have this for myself and my friends who help me and I like to wear this, especially if I'm meeting artist friends, so they can put a face to my profile photo slash logo. This one in particular uses a magnet. However, I designed a new one where it'll have a pin instead. Since the magnet keeps coming off as I tend to brush my hand against it often, honestly, this isn't the case with my friends because theirs doesn't fall off. It's just me. I think whatever I do during Artist Alley, like I'm always brushing it off for whatever reason. It's mostly a me problem. I also chose a magnet because I like to put it on like my sweater or my lanyard and it doesn't damage the material. It's more of a user error and the user is me. <laughs> Moving on to the next investment is my thermal bottle, AKA my Hydro Flask. I love my Hydro Flask. I don't care what bottle is in right now, but I'm going to use this until it breaks. I try to bring hot water whenever I can, especially if it's not summer, just because I talk a lot and I noticed that I tend to lose my voice very frequently. I used to use a 24 ounce bottle, but upgraded to 32 ounces just for events. So I have a decent amount of hot water or just regular water each day. In terms of storing cash, I'm really glad I invested in a fanny pack. Now I've seen others use a cash box. However, I feel more comfortable having the cash on my body because I've heard of horror stories where people steal their box when the artist isn't looking. I also like to decorate my fanny pack with these really cute crocheted barrettes that I got from another artist. You can find them here. As for how I organize cash, I've seen other people use pouches, envelopes, and so on. However, I personally like to use a coupon organizer so that I can easily file away the ones, five, tens, and twenties. All of these things and more have contributed to making my artist alley life a whole lot easier and I hope it does for you too. If you're curious as to what it's like to sell in the artist alley in the largest anime con in the US, watch this vlog from my experience at Anime Expo. See you in the next video.